All right, let's take a closer look at this unit. Here's the front panel. We have our adjustment knobs here and our frequency displays. The largest knob here adjusts the whole numbers and the slightly smaller knob adjusts the fractions. And the final knob here is a volume knob. And we have the same thing for the other side here. We have a DME selector switch and a DME hold switch. We also have test buttons on the bottom. These four screws on the outside here are what's used to hold it into the cockpit instrument panel. So here's what we have on the front. We have a piece of tape here that says Advantage Air on it. And our label here from Gates Learjet. We have our serial number and part number. Here's what we have on the back. We have two large connectors and two screws here holding the cover on. Now that I've taken out the screws, I can just slide off the cover. Here's what we have on the inside. And here's our cover. This is a thin sheet plastic cover. First, we can see these really nice cable laced wire looms. You'll notice every single wire here has its own little label. Here's the wiring on the back side. I can imagine wiring this up was a very tedious process. We also have a circuit board back here. Up here at the front we have our display wheels which have the different numbers printed on them. These rotate to indicate the correct frequency. Behind these we have a whole bunch of wafer switches. You can see they're made out of this circuit board like material. We also have some resistors mounted here and there. In the middle of these wafer switches we'll have the shafts. They are actually housed inside of each other. You can see the gears here rotate when I turn the knobs on the front. Back here we have a potentiometer which goes to this smallest knob here. You can see it rotating. This potentiometer also has a switch inside of it so you can hear it clicking. Here you can see the gears and the shaft moving as I rotate the knob for the whole numbers. And the one for the fractions here. The knob for the whole numbers here rotates these three wafer switches. And the knob here for the decimals rotates this shaft and this gear, and it corresponds with these three wafer switches back behind the first ones. Here you can see the contacts in the wafer switch working as they connect and deconnect um, different connections. Okay, here's the other side. Here we have this small little tube of metal. Inside here is a pin, a spring, and a ball bearing. You'll notice there is a serrated gear here, and that is what creates the clicking sound. That's also how the numbers are able to line up correctly on the display here. Behind the front panel on each side we have these small incandescent bulbs which illuminate a indicator light right here. And we also have the same thing on the other side over here. These nuts here are holding on the front face plate. We also have one over here and one here. And you'll also notice that we have a whole bunch of backlights here wired in parallel. This is to illuminate the panel when it is dark out. Here's one of our switches. The other one's in the middle here. It's kind of hard to see. All right, next let's take out these four screws that hold on this back panel here. All right, now it should come off. We can only pull it away so much because of the wiring harnesses. But you can see we have some ground wires here. And on this side here, we have that circuit board. Here we can get a little bit of a better look at the wiring harness that's in here. See, it's a pretty big harness there. It's multiple bundles with these going to the circuit board and the two big ones going to the connectors. All right, so let's take this little circuit board off here. All right, here's the circuit board. You can see here, this is a very basic circuit board. Each one of these contact pads here is labeled. On the other side here, we can see two resistors wired in parallel, and we have four diodes underneath these wires here. And the same thing with this other side here. 
So that's it for this super simple board. All right, let's get it hooked up to some power and see if we can get some of these lights to work. So after some tedious reverse engineering, I have figured out the pinouts for the backlight and indicator lights. First, I'm going to hook up the backlights, which use about five volts. I've got my power supply set to five volts and you can see it's drawing about 1.1 amps of current. I'm gonna turn off my light so we can see it better. Here's what it looks like with the backlights on. You can see that it lights it up nicely. Here's a look from the back side. The nav indicator lights are actually switched on and off by this volume knob here. You can hear the switch activate. These lights require 28 volts, which is a standard voltage on most aircraft, but my bench power supply only goes up to 24 volts, so that'll have to do. You can see I have my power supply set to 25 volts, which is the highest it'll go. These lights are only drawing about 80 milliamps. So let's turn the lights off and see if we can see them. All right, I'm gonna turn the one on the right on. And there we go, there's our indicator bulb. And if I turn it back off, and here's the one on the left. And turn it back off again. I can turn both of them on at the same time. And that's about it. All right, guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. And of course, thanks for watching.